Let's begin with a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity to worship your name, to hear your truth, and just to fellowship with other believers. God, I pray that your presence is felt here this morning, that we can seek you and that we hear your truth and just remember who you are and what you have done for us, God, because you have done so much for us that we are just forever uh, in your debt, and we just need you so much more, God, and I pray that you just help us to see that clearly today. In your son's name, amen. Well, good morning. It's good to see everybody here this morning. Uh, I've got a few announcements for you. The first, of course, you guys probably already know, is our welcome card. Uh, it's just right in the pew in front of you. If you are a guest here, first, second, third time, you haven't had the chance to fill one of these out, please grab it fill it out, and then you just place it in the offering plate as it goes by. Uh, so please go ahead and uh, start doing that. And then secondly, uh, I was given a, a sheet of paper to read, but I'm going to paraphrase it because it's all in caps and I don't want to yell at you. And so um, our Wednesday night suppers, you need to sign up. There's a brand new sheet out there to kind of sign up. Uh, I think sometimes we kind of think we just put our number throughout the whole sheet and then we're done for the semester. No, it's only for a couple months, and then every couple months you have to go back to the sign-up and then put your numbers down again uh, because there is a huge difference between the numbers that have signed up for this week and the numbers we had last week. Um, and so this Wednesday is our Pinewood Derby. It's a huge event. We have a lot of, of kids who are racing cars. It's going to be a lot of fun. The youth will be helping, uh, and the adults who don't want to really go to that, it's okay. We have two adult Bible studies that to be a part of alongside of that and so there's really no excuse you can either watch cars or have a Bible study there's something for you and so no excuse so but we need you to sign up for those meals so please on your way out take a look at that new sheet and just shot, uh, put your number down uh, and of course you guys probably saw when you were walking in on the uh, PowerPoint slides next week is time change the, the dreaded spring forward where we lose an hour of sleep it's coming, it's inevitable, so be aware of that. That is coming up next week, so just be uh, planning for that. And the last announcement for you guys is uh, a personal one. It's the youth. Tonight we are doing Aliens and Pizza. 5.30, arrive at the church. We're going to have pizza for you guys. Uh, and then Casey, my wife, she's going to be sharing a lesson. And then after that, we're going to be running around the church playing Aliens. And so it's going to be an amazing night. Last time we had a... a a few dozen students just come and run around the church eating pizza, just having a blast. And so that's going to be a really fun event. Students, bring your friends. Very easy event to bring your friends to. So please, let's pack the house here tonight for the youth. Uh, we're going to go ahead and stand and greet one another here this morning. join me now as we sing in Christ alone. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ 
I live. There in the ground, his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me, from life's first cry to final breath. Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man, ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. No power of hell, no guilt of man could ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I stand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. I've heard a thousand stories of what they Never alone, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, I've seen many searching for answers for Just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who 
come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare, you're our living hope. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us experience more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place, fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome. By your presence, Lord. You may be seated. Thank you for such great singing. Youth, you may come forward to collect our tithes and offerings. Good morning. Good to see you here at this worship this morning. Uh, before we go any further, somebody I'd like to introduce to you. Uh, right over here, about three quarters of the way back, Glenn Akins is the Assistant Executive Director for the Baptist General Association of Virginia. Glenn, would you stand so we can recognize you? We're excited to have you here with us this morning. You may ask, what is the Baptist General Association of Virginia? Well, we do talk about them some, but, but that is our, our state denominational convention, and uh, we, uh, we are very much involved in the ministry of that. In fact, and, and this is not that we're in competition with anybody, but in our 
our local association, the Augusta Baptist Association, which covers both Augusta County and uh, Rockingham County. You, this church is the largest giver to the BHGAV and just about every other mission category. And so, uh, so God bless you for being investing in not only missions and ministry around here, around our own community, but also what God is doing throughout Virginia and also throughout the world. So very excited about that. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you not only that we are called into relationship with God through Jesus Christ, but also we are called into mission and ministry with him, both across the table and across the world. Father, thank you for that honor, for that blessing to be called and be one of your own. Father, we lift up to you those in our church that are dealing with cancer and its recuperations. Father, we also lift up to you uh, those that are in the hospital, those that are recuperating. Father, we celebrate that Betty Connor has been able to come home. We pray for, for continued strength and anointing and blessing upon her health. Father, as we continue to worship you, open up the word. Father, I pray that you will not, they will not hear the preacher, but they will hear your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. All right, I want you to open up to the Word of God in Romans, the 14th chapter, verses 17 through 18. While you're doing that, of course, I have a story for you. There, there was a, an American businessman, he was taking a, a vacation, and he went down to the, the coast of, of Mexico, some, something kind of like that. And, and while he was across there, he saw one fishing boat just pull in. It was still mid-morning, and, and he had a, a boat full of beautiful bluefin tuna. And the businessman complimented the Mexican fisherman on that. And he said, so um, are you going back out catching some more tuna? He goes, no, I, I have enough for, for me and my family for the day. And he goes, well, what do you do with the rest of your day? And he said, well, I sleep in, I fish a little, I play with my children, I take a siesta with my wife in the afternoon, and then later in the day I, I go into the town and see my friends and play guitar until, until late in the evening. I have a very full and meaningful life. And the American businessman looked at him and just kind of shook his head and he said, oh, you could be so much more. You're in luck. I have an MBA from Harvard. I'm going to help you out. Here's what you need to do. You need to spend more time catching tuna. And when you do that with the extra proceeds, you can buy another boat and then another boat. And then you can have a fleet of tuna boats. And then after that, you can control the, the distribution from, from catching fish to the, to the cannery, to, to, the, to the markets. And then you can move, do that. And after that, after you grow, you can move to Mexico City and from there set up offices in Los Angeles. And you've got to eventually end up in New York City. And the Mexican fisherman looked at him and said, well, how long, that's, how long is that going to take? He goes, well, about probably 15 to 20 years. And here's the good part. After 15 to 20 years, you can, you can offer an IPO, sell it on the stock market, and you'll make millions of dollars. And the Mexican fisherman looked at him and said, well, that sounds really good, but what do I do after that? He said, then you can retire and go to a coastal fishing village where you can sleep in late and play with your grandchildren and, and take a siesta with your wife and go to the village in the evenings and play guitar with your friends every night. Well, peace. Sometimes when we take our eye off the ball, it becomes elusive to it. It was right there in front of us. In fact, as I mentioned to you last week when we were talking about being peacemakers, what not to do. There's a whole lot more to say about what not to do about being a peacemaker than there is to say about what to do because if you'll just keep focusing on what it is and don't get distracted, peace just kind of breaks out inside of the church. Instead of the other distractions that, that may start off with good intent, but end up breaking the peace and the fellowship of the church. Last week, what, what we talked about, to put things into context, is we talked about how people were causing problems in the church because they were new converts to Christianity in Rome, and, and, and they felt like Christians should not 
eat meat that has been sacrificed to idols. And it was, it was an issue of personal holiness to them. But, but not only did they feel like that was a great conviction for them, they felt like it was a great conviction for everybody else. And, so, and they also came up with some, some other rules. And, and Paul was explaining to them, that's not what the Christian life is all about. They focused on the minors and made it a major and focused on things that were non-essential, adding to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, last week we talked about this. We talked about don't make things, don't make a thing out of a thing if it ain't no big thing. Several of you people have said, I've been quoting that all week long, so I can't say it once. But anyway, don't make a thing out of a thing if it ain't no big thing. You, and next, you don't have to be right all the time. And thirdly, don't let your, let your good go bad. Well, let's talk about what peacemakers do. And we're going to look at verse 17 and 18 for the, for the first uh, point on that. First of all, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Whoever serves the Messiah in this way is acceptable to God and approved by men. Here's your first principle for being a pre peacemaker, what to do. Remember what we are supposed to be about. As I said earlier, they were focusing, or, or an element in the church was focusing on a non-essential. Uh, folks, we have a hard time identifying with a church-splitting issue over Eating, mo eating meat that's been sacrificed to idols. We, we can't even conceptualize why that was such a big issue. But, but for these Roman Christians, they grew up in paganism. And they'd accepted Jesus Christ by grace through faith. And they wanted to have as little to do with ancient paganism as possible. God bless them. It was a conviction that they felt like God had placed upon them. God bless them. If, if that was their conviction, they need to hold to that conviction. But because it's a non-essential, they had no reason to place that on the other Christians in the church. And they were willing to risk the peace of the Roman church over that issue. Now, once again, we, we can't hardly identify with that particular issue, but we can identify perhaps with other things let me let me bring up something that that's happened in my life that probably is no big deal to you one way or another but when i was when i became a christian in oklahoma at oklahoma state university years ago we we had a lot of people both that i knew in oklahoma and texas that felt like well if you're a serious christian you should listen to nothing but christian music and man if that was their conviction God bless them, and I tried. Folks, I can only listen to so much Amy Grant. All right? I went out and bought the 8-track Age to Age because that was the better one, the newer one. I popped it in there, and I, I listened to it four or five hours and about lost my mind. And I prayed about it, and I felt like the Holy Spirit was saying, it's okay to get your 8-tracks of the Doobie Brothers and Journey and pop them back in. Well, listen, to this day, I listen to Christian music. I also listened to rock and roll from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and I listen to country music. But more than anything, I listen to sports radio because it's a bunch of nonsense, and I need some nonsense in my life. If that's your conviction, to listen to nothing but Christian radio and Christian music, and frankly, that's what my wife does. Well, God bless you for that. But it's not an essential for fellowship. See, we have freedom in the body of Christ. And it, it, what the essentials that we're looking for, we can see in the back part of that verse. It says this, righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Folks, those are the essentials of what we're looking for in the fellowship of the body. Real quick, righteousness. Righteousness by God's standards. It doesn't mean that everything out there is okay for us to do. We do believe in right 
and wrong. We do believe that God has, a, ha, has an ethical standard for our lives. There are things that he clearly says are sins, and there are things that he says that we have freedom in. So our righteousness, the righteousness that we s seek after, we look according to Scripture and also under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Also, peace. Peace, not as the world seeks peace, but peace on God's terms. Peace that, that can give us a centeredness even if there's times of conflict and storm about us. Peace according to God's calling. Also, joy, a centeredness of contentment within Christ, even within the storms that are raging about. And in the Holy Spirit. We're talking about not only being aware of the Word of God, but allowing the Holy Spirit to give us illumination because we believe that the, that the illumination and, and, the, and, and really the inspiration of Scripture comes from the Holy Spirit. But not only that, but the Holy Spirit will also give you personal convictions and direction in how you live your life. Folks, these are the things that are pleasing to God. These are the things that build peace within the church. These are things that from the very beginning of time that we can all be in agreement on. And the next verse, verse 19. So then, we must promote, we must pursue what promotes peace and what builds up one another. Next, next principle, chase peace by building up others in the church do you want peace in the church you got to keep it on your radar because it's easy to lose sight of it you got to defend peace because frankly there are those that will assault peace you got to defend it you also have to nurture it because it's it's a vulnerable and precious thing and you invest in its integrity and you love it because God loves it. And we belong to God. And in building peace in the church, we seek to build other people up. Folks, that, that is one of the most enriching experiences that you can have as a follower of Jesus Christ, is to build other people up. It doesn't mean that you don't ever have to, to, to address problems or shortcomings or that type of thing. But folks, you can do it negatively, or you can do it through building people up, through encouraging others. I can tell you one of the most enjoyable, enriching things in my life after 35 years of ministry is building people up in the church and and not only in this church but also looking at uh you know keeping up with facebook and a lot of people that were in my youth ministry years decades ago and particularly it's a joy to me to see many of them that are in vocational ministry and, and even more those that are are faithful lay people man they, they've stayed faithful and even deepened in the faith and are in leadership in their 30s and 40s what what a joy to me as, as your pastor it is to 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 build up young men that that uh that feel a calling to ministry and you know being able, able to ordain eric to ministry and and also cj and later zach uh franklin will be leading his first communion in the 11 o'clock service folks that's 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 something that is personally enriching and if you spend your time doing that you don't have a lot of motivation to tear down when you're building up and this is a a blessing not only to the church but to other people and you know something about god is when you follow him and when you're investing in enriching other people you get blessed a whole lot more than you could ever be blessed by being in it for yourself. And that's why Paul in the book of Philippians, he closes by saying this. For who is our hope, our joy, or crown of boasting in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ when it's coming? Is it not you? For you are our 
glory, and joy. Folks, having a heart for that, that's how you build peace in the church. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for being our Lord and our God. Father, we thank you for, not, for calling us to be peacemakers. And not only peacemakers, but you have given the title of sons of God. Father, if we are not peacemakers, bring us under conviction and, and help us to be aware of how we can build up others in the body and in the faith. And now, Father, as we come together in a time of communion, we pray for an anointing on this time. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. We are going into a time of communion. This time of communion is, well, it's, it's about the kingdom of God. It's about God's relationship with you. And, and so, as we often say, this is not the table of Memorial Baptist Church or a Baptist church. It is the Lord's table. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are invited, and in fact, encouraged to come and participate in the table. Also, during this time, we have people come forward to receive communion on their own. However, if you would like one of our deacons to bring communion and serve you, all you need to do is raise your hand, and one of our deacons will come to you. Let me pray for you. Father God, we come before you once again in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, calls us to examine our heart, to forgive, so that we might receive your blessing, your calling, the communion of believers. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Deacons, will you please come forward? Prepare the table. Servants of the church, please come forward. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. And when Jesus met with his disciples the day before Passover, he met with them. He took the bread and broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you. Take and eat. Amen. Scripture tells us in both the Old and New Testament that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Jesus Christ became the, the Lamb of Sacrifice and his blood was shed for our sins. And Jesus said, this is my blood shed for you. Take and drink. Thank you, Father, for your blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. We will start with the center rows. You are encouraged to come forward. God bless you.
its holy ground on which we stand. Stand amazed because of grace, because of grace. And we were blind, now we see. We had stumbled in the darkness, but now we felt of reach. He was more loved, loved and gave because of grace, because of grace. We were lost, we were found, we had wandered through the wilderness, but now it's holy ground on which we stand. Stand amazed because of grace, because of grace. And we were blind, but now we see. We had stumbled in the darkness, but not beyond the reach of he who loved, loved and gave because of grace, because of grace. Everything we are and are and all we're going to be, blessing after blessing, rescued and redeemed. Once our hearts were bound by fear, but now we've been set free. Grace changes everything. Oh, grace changes everything. Until his truth revealed the one who came, came to save because of grace, because of grace. Oh, we were hurt, then we were healed, we were dying in our sinfulness until his truth revealed the one who came came to save because of grace because of grace everything we were and are and all we're going to be blessing after blessing the rescued and redeemed once our hearts were bound by fear but now we've been set free cause his grace changes everything oh his grace changes everything everything we were and are and all we're going to has been changed because of grace. Blessing after blessing rescued and redeemed once our hearts were bound by fear but now we've been set free because grace changes everything oh his grace 
changes everything. We may have a lot of different opinions, a lot of different convictions, but there are, there's one thing that binds us together, and that is grace by faith in Jesus Christ. Salvation through Christ alone. That is what we have in common. That is what binds us together. If you would stand, join hands across the aisle as we sing together, bind us together. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. There is only one God. There is only one King. There is only one body. That is why we can sing. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. God's grace to you.